Welcome, listeners, to the We On podcast. Today, we're embarking on a, a really fascinating deep dive. We're looking into strategic defense technology. That's right. Specifically, some of these powerful bunker-busting weapons you hear about. Exactly. We want to kind of unpack how India's upgraded Agni-5 missile stacks up against, say, the US GBU-57 and maybe China's DF-15C. And what's really interesting here, I think, is looking at the very distinct ways these nations approach deep strike capabilities. You know, how their designs really reflect different strategic thinking and, well, different tech levels, too. Okay, yeah, good point. So let's get into this comparison. How about we start with how they actually uh, get delivered, the platform. Sure. For the Agni-5, what are we looking at? So the Agni-5 is a land-based system. It's road mobile, an ICBM intercontinental ballistic missile. Road mobile, okay. So that gives it, what, flexibility? Survivability. Huge flexibility. Makes it very survivable. You can move it around. Makes it harder to target compared to, say, fixed silos or airfields. Fields. Yeah. And it's pretty cost effective in that sense. Right. No need for complex air missions just to launch. Right. Unlike uh, the GBU-57. Exactly. The GBU-57 is a massive conventional bomb. Needs an aircraft like the B-2 Spear Bomber to carry and drop it. So its reach is totally tied to that bomber's range and, well, its ability to get through defenses. Precisely. And then you have the DF-15C from China. Which is also land-based, but it's a short-range ballistic missile, more for uh, regional strikes. Okay, so three very different ways of getting the job done. Land mobile ICBM, airdrop bomb, regional missile. Different tools for different strategic contexts, you could say. That mobility of the Agni-5 is a significant advantage, strategically speaking. Less vulnerable. Definitely. Okay, so they arrive at the target. What about the power? the uh, weight and how deep they can actually penetrate. Let's talk bunker busting power. Right. The GBU-57, well, it's the heavyweight champion here, about 13,600 kilograms total. Wow. And the explosive payload. Around 2,700 kilos of explosives. And it's rated to penetrate uh, 60 meters of reinforced concrete. 60. 60 meters. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. How does the Agni-5 compare? You said it's different. It is. The Agni-5 is actually lighter overall, maybe around 7,500 kilograms. Lighter. Okay. But, and this is the interesting part, it's engineered for deeper penetration. Reports suggest up to 100 meters of reinforced concrete. 100 meters? How? Yes. If it's lighter? Well, it's likely down to a couple of things. Much higher impact velocity, probably. Coming in much faster converts kinetic energy into penetration power. And potentially advanced warhead design, maybe using things like shaped charges to focus the blast energy. It really shows some advanced engineering for that specific deep strike mission. Okay, so lighter but potentially deeper. That's quite a feat of engineering. And the DF-15C? Much, much lighter. Maybe 500 to 750 kilos total weight. Estimated penetration is around 20 meters. Mm. Clearly designed for different, perhaps less hardened targets. Right, different scale entirely. So penetration is one thing, but speed and reach are critical too, right? Mm. Getting there fast and from far away. Absolutely crucial. Reaction time is everything. So Agni-5 speed. We're talking hypersonic. Mach 8 to potentially Mach 20. That's incredibly fast. 8 to 20 times the speed of sound. Wow. And the range. Up to 2,500 kilometers mentioned for this specific bunker buster configuration. Possibly more for other variants. Strategic range, definitely. That combination. Hypersonic speed, long range, plus the mobility we talked about. It's a potent mix. It offers really unique strategic capabilities, striking deep very quickly without putting pilots in harm's way over defended territory. That's a key advantage. Makes sense. How about the others? The F-15C. Still fast, Mach 6 to Mach 8 perhaps, but the range is much shorter, around 700 kilometers. Reinforces that regional role. And the GBU-57, its speed is just impact velocity, right? Yeah, when dropped, it hits maybe around Mach 1. Its operational range is dictated by the bomber carrying it potentially very long, like 11,000 kilometers for a B-2. But that bomber has to get there, which takes time and faces air defenses. It's not the near instant threat of a hypersonic missile. So, pulling this all together, yeah. what does it mean for you listening in? Well, it seems India's Agni-5, especially with these upgrades, it's shaping up to be a really distinct and versatile strategic asset. That deep strike precision combined with survivability, it's quite something. Definitely stands out. What strikes you about how these different approaches to bunker busting reflect those bigger strategic priorities we mentioned? And maybe looking ahead, what could be the next leap in this kind of technology? Something to think about. Stay tuned for more such intriguing stories to come.